Oh, it's never stopped the rest of us. <laughs> no, it's not usually stopped me before. <laughs> it can be a short Thank one. You. It doesn't even have to be a dirty one if you don't want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to know any clean ones. Oh, well. You've got to give me a little more warning than that. <laughs> All right, we'll try it. All right. Oh, there was a woman and she lived on her own. She slaved on her own and she skidded on her own. She had two little girls and two little boys and she lived all alone with her husband. <laughs> For her husband he was a hunk of a man, a chunk of a man and a drunk of a man. He was a hunk of a drunk of a skunk of a man, <laughs> such a boozing, bruising husband. For he would come home drunk each night, he'd thrash her black and he'd thrash her white. He'd thrash her to within an inch of her life, and then he'd sleep like a log, did her husband. One night she gathered her tears all round her pain, she thought of the bruising and cried with the pain. Oh, you'll not do that ever again. I won't live with a drunken husband. But as she lay and thought in bed, a strange old thought came into her head. She went for the needle, went for the thread, and went back into a sleeping husband. And she started to stitch with a girlish thrill, and a woman's heart and a seamstress skill. She stitched and stitched with an iron will All around a sleeping husband Oh, the top sheet, the bottom sheet too The blanket stitched to the mattress through She stitched and stitched for the whole night through And then she's waited the dawn and her husband And when he awoke with a pain in his head he found that he could not move in bed. Sweet Christ, I've lost the use of my legs, but this wife just smiled at her husband. For in her hand she held the frying pan, with a giggle in her heart she's given him a lamb. He could not move, but he's cried, God damn, don't you swear she cries to her husband. Oh, the frying pan, the colander too, with a rolling pin, just a stroke or two. <laughs> She's beat her husband black and blue, such a battered and bleeding husband. And she says, if you ever come undrunk any more, I'll stitch you up and I'll thrash you more. Then I'll pack my bags and I'll be out the door. I won't live with a drunken husband. Oh, isn't it true what small can do with a woman's heart and a stitch or two? He's fixed his ways and his drinking's through. It's goodbye to a drunken husband. <laughs> <laughs> six kids at home, and Betty just got tired of it. So old Matt come in one night drunk, she tied him up with a, with a big long light cord, and like to beat him there. <laughs> 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 and, and she grabbed to hold him, and, and he, he got a big, <laughs> had a big ball spot on top of his head where she pulled his hair out. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I tell you what, every evening at three o'clock when it's time to go home, but he hit her. <laughs> 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 she made a brief out of her. Just to remind you that. Yeah, he's going to do ham. Yeah, he's going to do ham. He's thinking about it. You haven't heard ham. No. Have you heard you Hamlet? Heard, oh, this, <laughs> this is one. Larry? I've heard about Hamlet. <laughs> Have you heard Hamlet? Yes. Oh, okay. But I'll hear it again. Yes, you I will. I've heard it three times or twice. <laughs> That's the truth.
There was this king sitting in his garden all alone when his brother in his ear pulled a little bit of hen's pain. Stole his brother's crown and his money and his widow. But the dead king walked and got his son and said, Hey, listen, kiddo. I've been murdered and it's your duty to take revenge on Claudius. Kill him quick and clean and tell the nation what a fraud he is. The lad said, right, I'll do it, but I'll have to play it crafty so that no one will suspect me. I'll get on that I'm a dafty. So with all except a ratio, and he counts him as a friend. And let that stop, boy, he kids on his round the bend. And because he isn't ready for obligatory killing, he tries to make the king think that he's tough and soft a shilling. To the rise out of Polonius treats poor Ophelia vile, tells Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, then marks a bleed in jail. Then a troop of travelling actors like the 784 arrive to do a special one night gig in Elsinore. <laughs> Hamlet, Hamlet, no acting barmy. Hamlet, Hamlet loves his mommy. Hamlet, Hamlet, there's it tating. Wonders if the ghosts are cheat, and that is why he's waiting. So Hamlet writes a scene for the players to enact. So Horatio and he can watch to see if Claudius cracks. For well, the play was called The Mousetrap, not the one that's playing now. And sure enough, the king walks out before the final bow. So now Hamlet's got the proof that Claudius give his dad the dose. The only problem being now that Claudius knows he knows. And while Hamlet tells his mummy a new husband's not a fit one, Uncle Claude puts out a contract with the English king as hitman. And when Hamlet killed Polonius, the concealed corpus delecti was the king's excuse to send him for an English hemp and necktie. And with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to make sure that he got there, our Hamlet jumped the boat and put the finger straight on that fair. And when Laertes heard his dad had been stabbed through the arras, he came running back to Elsinore to sweet hot foot from Paris, and Ophelia with her dad killed by the one she wished to marry. After saying it with flowers, she committed Harry Carey. Are you Is finished? That the end? No. Yeah, yeah. Hamlet, it's no, it's no, it's Hamlet, no messing. Hamlet, Hamlet learned his lesson. Hamlet, Hamlet, your ex crust convinced him that men, good or bad, at last must come to dust. Then Laertes lost his cool and was demanding retribution. The king said, keep your head and I'll provide you a solution. He arranged a sword fight for the interested parties with a blunted sword for Hamlet and a sharpened sword for Laertes. And to make things double sure, the old belt and braces line. He fixed a poison sword tip and a poison jug of wine. Well, the poison sword got Hamlet, but Laertes went and muffed it. Cause he got stabbed himself and he confessed before he snuffed it. And then Hamlet's mummy drank no wine and as her face turned blue, Hamlet said, I think the king's a baddie through and through. Incestuous, murderous, damned Dane, he said to be precise and made up for hesitating once by killing Claudius twice. For he stabbed him with the sword and forced the cut between his lips. He said the rest is silence and then cashed in all his chips. They fired a volley over him that book took the topmost rafter and then fought him brass knee deep in Danes lived happy ever after <laughs> Hamlet Hamlet's all that gory Hamlet Hamlet end of story Hamlet Hamlet I'm on my way and if you thought that was boring you should read the bloody play <laughs> Chance of intelligent interplay tonight. Well, that was the cultural part yeah, of our yes. program. Folks. If that's all the culture we got, we're in bad shape. Yeah, yeah. Back to the three students. Well, I think Mike's going to sing one. I've been here forever. <laughs> since, you, since you haven't been here for a while, make it real dirty. Yeah, make it dirty and long. A <laughs> really dirty, one of those dirty British songs. We love it, man. Jeez. <laughs> Not to put too much pressure He's on going through his list now. <laughs> you say that we shouldn't have heard it before, too. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, we haven't. We right. must have heard a it. dirty song we haven't heard before. Yeah. That's, gonna, that's really going to put the pressure on you. <laughs> that really is. I went through all the dirty ones. In the first few uh, <laughs> um.
Well. <laughs> What about drowning somebody in the river? How about that? Oh, that's oh, good. I love that. That, that, that always goes down well. Trying to cut their, <laughs> cut their head off for you throw them in the river. Uh, kind of, kind of. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. It gets, it, it, it gets, yeah. It gets better. Yeah. <laughs> well, there were two little sisters a walking along. Oh, the gay and the grinding. And the eldest pushed the sister in by the bonny bonny bows of London. Oh, she pushed her in, she watched her drown. Oh, the gay and the grinding. Watched her sister floating down by the bonny bonny bows of London. Well, she floated down to the miller's pond. Oh, the gay and the grinding. She floated down to the miller's pond by the bonny bonny bows of London. And then out and come the miller's son, oh, the gay and the grinding. Father, dear, here swims a swan by the bonny bonny bows of London. So he's pulled her out on the bank to die, oh, the gay and the grinding. A fool with a fiddle comes riding by by the bonny bonny <laughs> bows of London. <laughs> and he's taking four strands of her long yellow hair, oh, the gay and the grinding. He's took four strands of her long yellow hair by the bonny bonny bows of London. And he's made fiddle strings from her long yellow hair, oh, the gay and the grinding. He's made fiddle strings from her long yellow hair by the bonny bonny bows of London. And he's made fiddle pigs from her long finger bones, oh, the gay and the grinding. He's made fiddle pigs from her long finger bones by the bonny bonny bows of London. And he's made a fiddle out of her breastbone, oh, the gay and the grinding. The sound would pierce our hearts of stone by the bonny bonny bows of London. But the only tune that the fiddle would play was all oh, the bows of London. The only tune our fiddle would play was the bonny bonny bows of London. Well, the fool's gone away to the king's high hall, oh, the gay and the grinding. And there was music dancing and all by the bonny bonny bows of London. And he's laid the fiddle on a long grey stone, oh, the gay and the grinding. It played so loud, it played all alone by the bonny bonny bows of London. It sang, yonder sits my father, the king, oh, the gay and the grinding. Yonder sits my father, the king, by the bonny bonny bows of London. And yonder sits my mother, the queen, oh, the gay and the grinding. How shall we fat my burying by the bonny bonny bows of London? And yonder sits my sister Anne, oh, the gay and the grinding. She who drowned me in the stream by the bonny bonny bows of London. <laughs> Are you and Mike up to doing whiskey for us? Yeah. See, now they know the songs. Now you're in trouble. Now they can call out specific yeah. songs. Yeah. You know, they used to be opera people, but they, we've taken them away from that whole world. We've rescued them from opera. As long as they don't throw things.
an Audrey. But... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they've heard that mermaid song. I'm really up it's on that mermaid song. Time. Oh, I know there's people here that haven't. There's people I haven't heard the mermaid song. Do the mermaid song. What you do that mermaid song? That'd be good. The mermaid song. Oh yeah. Yeah, but you're kind of Randy anyway. Yeah. She's like oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Trouble. Don't take that first one. Right? <laughs> no, I did not. I was too late. I'm to her. <laughs> when I was a lad in a fishing town, my old man said to me, You can spend your life, your jolly life, a sailing on the sea. You can search the world for pretty girls. Till your eyes are weak and dim But don't go searching for a mermaid, son If you don't know how to swim <laughs> So I signed on to a sailing ship My very first day at sea I saw the mermaid beneath the waves Reaching out to me Come live with me in the sea, said she Down in the ocean floor and I'll show you a million wondrous things that you've never seen before. So over I jumped and we swam away. And we lived with the crabs and the whales. <laughs> and how I loved her silvery smile and the silvery shine of her scales. For her hair was green as seaweed. Her skin was blue and pale. Her face it was a work of art. I love that girl with all my heart, but I only like the upper part. I did not like the tail. <laughs> so over we went and we swam away, down to a seaweed bed. And a pillow made from a tortoise shell she placed beneath my head. She fed me shrimp and caviar upon a silver dish. From her head to her waist, it was just my taste. The rest of her was a fish. Because <laughs> her hair was green as seaweed. Her skin was blue and pale. Her face, it was a work of art. I loved that girl with all my heart. But I only liked the upper part. I did not like the tail. <laughs> and then one day she swam away. So I sang to the crabs and the whales. Oh, how I miss her seaweed hair and the silvery shine of her scales. But then her sister, she came by and set my heart a whirl. Because the upper part was an ugly fish and the bottom part was a girl. Because her fins was green as seaweed, her skin was blue and pale. Her legs, they are a work of art. I love that girl with all my heart and I don't give a damn about the upper part <laughs> because that's how I get my tail. That'll keep you off the radio. <laughs> no <one. laughs> so this is, uh, I don't think it's a child ballad, but it's nearly as old. And it is about um, a sea captain who is sailing along and comes by the, by the shore of an, of an island on which he spies the most beautiful girl he's ever seen walking up and down. And he uh, sends his sailors off to get her. Um, but the uh, situation doesn't quite turn out as he had hoped. Oh, it's all the sea captain who sailed the salt seas. And the moon it shone gentle and clear, oh. I will die, I will die, the captain did cry. Unless you bring me that maiden who walks on the shore. Else you bring me that maid on the shore. So the sailors all got them a very long boat. And it's off for the shore they did steer, oh. Saying, Mom, if you please, to enter on board, to view a fine cargo of costly wares, to view a fine cargo of wares. 
And it's with much persuading they've got her on board. And the moon it shone gentle and clear, oh. And she sat herself down in the stern of the boat. And it's off for the ship the bold sailors did steer. And it's off for the ship they did steer. And when they've arrived alongside of the ship, Oh, the captain he spat out his chew -o, Saying, first you will lie in me arms all this night, Then I'll hand you right back to me jolly young crew, <laughs> Then I'll hand you right back to me crew. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, this young girl, she cried, Oh, that's just what I've been a-waiting for. For I've grown so weary of my maidenhead As I've wandered alone on this rocky old shore. As I've wandered alone on this shore. So she set herself down in the stern of the ship. And the moon it shone gentle and clear, oh. And she sung so neat, genteel and complete. She sang sailors and captain right off to sleep. She sung sailors and captain to sleep. And she's robbed them of silver, she's robbed them of gold. And she's plundered their bright costly wares, oh. And the captain's broadsword she's took for an oar. And she's paddled right back to a rocky old shore. And she's paddled right back to a shore. Oh, were me men drunk, or oh, were me men mad? Or oh, were they sunk deep in despair, oh, For they've led her away with her beauty so gay, And again she's a maid on the rocky old shore, <laughs> And again she's a maid on the shore. All right. <laughs> I picked this up off a, off a new album I found a few weeks ago. It is about about the song collectors who were a um, group of men round about the turn of the 20th century who travelled around England and America writing down traditional songs. And to them we owe so much of our just huge amount of the folk tradition that we enjoy and a whole lot of songs that Charlie sings and we crack out here every week. And this song is, is a kind of fanciful account of the doings of one of those, at least I hope it's, it's uh, fanciful. <laughs> the Folk Society meets on Thursday night To clear their throats and put their coughs to flight <laughs> To sing the dusty cobwebs from the room A repertoire both in and out of tune <laughs> Don't assume a sing-along or worse this history preserved in song and verse pays homage to the man who long ago Collected all the songs the singers know Collected all the songs the singers know Edward Alexander, man of action Armed only with his reel-to-reel -reel contraption. <laughs> One hundred years ago in Mac and Boots, Set out to faithfully preserve the nation's roots. And every night in some small village inn, Fortified with fortitude and gin, <laughs> Edward Alexander for a shilling, would thus record your song if you were willing. <laughs> Would thus record your song if you were willing. And so the word got out, there formed a queue, and a line of willing singers grew and grew. Brass for oohs and ahs, you can't go wrong. 
When there's someone paying a shilling for a song When all his tapes are filled up Edward leaves There's a history preserved so he believes But all the so-called singers back inside they know they took the city scholar for a ride. <laughs> they took the city scholar for a ride. Because they shook the man for every coin he got. With words and tunes all made up on the spot. <laughs> Invented tales not 20 minutes old. And so history like ale is bought and sold. <laughs> The old contraptions packed away and boxed And a century is marked upon the clocks So now the fruits of Edward's great collection Are honoured with a weekly resurrection <laughs> Honoured with a weekly resurrection So now the old society sings the songs Word for word and kept where they belong and as every week they eulogise the past You can hear the ghosts of history laughing last <laughs> You can hear the ghosts of history laughing last <laughs> I've often wondered about that you yeah. know? <laughs> you know, he, he really likes me, he's going to pay me $10 Sing, singing, this singing that tin can <laughs> You want to do a fiddle too? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Good enough for me. How to be? Okay, I'm going to start it off. You want me to? What?
as I said. <laughs> <laughs> Tag it for the love of God. Tag it. <laughs> so, one of the things about Woody Guthrie that people don't really know is that he really, really, really wanted to meet Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> and I don't exactly mean meet. He would, when he was living in, in New York City, he would, when he had a family, he would, one of his many families, he would sneak off in the afternoon and go watch Ingrid Bergman movies over and over and over again. Really? Because he was deeply in love with Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> oh my lord. So this is, this is Woody Guthrie's song about Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> Ingrid Bergman, Ingrid Bergman, let's go make a picture on the island of Stromboli. Ingrid Bergman, Ingrid Bergman, you're so pretty, you'd make any mountain quiver, you'd make fire fly from the crater. Ingrid Bergman This old mountain it's been waiting all its life for you to wake it For your hands to touch its hard rock Ingrid Bergman If you walk across my canvas I would flash the world your story I would pay you more than money Ingrid Bergman Not by pennies, dimes, nor quarters But with happy sons and daughters <laughs> And they'd sing around Stromboli Ingrid Bergman This old mountain, it's been waiting all its life for you to wake it for your hands to touch its hard rock Ingrid Bergman Ingrid Bergman <laughs> <laughs> Alright It's such a such a pretty song and at the same time yeah. bearing in mind Woody Guthrie wasn't renowned for taking regular baths <laughs> 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 Oh, there lived a wife in Usher's well, and a wealthy wife was she. She too stout and stalwart sons, and sent them o'er the sea. They'd not been gone a week, and a week but barely one, when cruel death came over land, took them one by one. I wish the wind would never blow, nor fish swim in the flood, till my darling sons are home, their home in flesh and blood. There about the Martinmas, when the nights were long and dark, her three kids came to her door, and their hats were made of bark, and the tree never grew on any bush, nor down by any wall, but at the gates of paradise grew strong and grew tall. Blow up the fire, my maidens all, bring water from the well, for my darling babes are home, they've come home safe and well. And she has laid the table with bread and with wine, Come eat and drink, my babies, oh, eat and drink of mine. We cannot eat your bread, mother, nor may we drink your wine. For cruel death is lord of all, to him we must resign. The green grass is at our heads, and the clay is at our feet. And your tears come tumbling down and wet our winding sheet. So she has laid a bed for them, spread the milk-white sheet, 
And she's laid it on a cloth of gold to see if they could sleep. And the cock had not crowed once nor clapped his wings for day. When the eldest to the youngest said, Brother, we must away. And the cock had not crowed thrice nor clapped his wings for day. When the eldest to the youngest said, Brother, we must away. For the cock crows the day, dawns the chunnering one doth chide. And... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of words. <laughs> you left out two verses. <laughs> no, I'm you kidding. Did. <laughs> I left out a lot of verses. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. I am the man, the well-fed man in charge of the terrible knob. The most pleasing thing about it, it's almost a permanent job. Cause when the atom war is over, and the world is split in three, a consolation I've got. Well, maybe it's not, there'll be nobody left but me. <laughs> I sit in my desk in Washington, in charge of this great machine. More vicious than Adolf Hitler, more deadly than Strickenine. And in the evening, after a tiring day, just to give myself a laugh. I hit the button, a playful jolt, and I listen for the blast. <laughs> I am the man, the well-fed man, in charge of the terrible knob. The most pleasing thing about it, it's almost a permanent job. Cause when the atom war is over, and the world's all split in three, a consolation I've got. Well, maybe it's not, there'll be nobody left but me. <laughs> if Brezhnev starts his nonsense and makes a nasty smell, with a wink and a nod from Nixon, I'll blast them all to hell. <laughs> and as for that fella Castro, him with his sugar cane, he needn't hide behind his whiskers, I'll get him just the same. <laughs> I am the man, the well-fed man, in charge of the terrible knob. The most pleasing thing about it, it's almost a permanent job. Cause when the atom war is over, and the world is split in three, a consolation I've got. Well, maybe it's not, there'll be nobody left but me. If me wife denies me conjuncular rights and me breakfast milk is sour From eight to nine in the morning, you're in for a nervous hour <laughs> The button being so dreadfully close, it's really a terrible laugh A bump with me ass as I go past and the world goes up in smoke I am the man, the well-fed man in charge of the terrible knock The most pleasing thing about it it's almost a permanent job Cause when the atom war is over And the world is split in three A consolation I've got Well maybe it's not There'll be nobody left but me Well I'm thinking of joining the army The army that bans the bomb They'll take up a collection And I'll donate me thumb Cause without <laughs> it I am helpless And that's the way to be you don't have to kill a whole bloody lot to set the people free. <laughs> I am the man, the well-fed man in charge of the terrible knob. The most pleasing thing about it, it's almost a permanent job. Cause when the atom war is over and the world is split in three, a consolation I've got. Well, maybe it's not, there'll be nobody left but me. <laughs> <laughs> Those that is Enoch Kent. Yeah. Was Enoch Kent. He was a Scots Canadian songwriter. Wrote, wrote all kinds of things like that. that that's um, that's great. But yeah. it was... Well, I'm getting Mike to do one from the old country. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mike just got here. <laughs> He's been practicing all this time. <laughs> <laughs> There's no juveniles here tonight, so you can let it all hang sure. out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right.
Yeah, you ask for it. All right, here it comes. All right. It's funny, last week we had these kids here, and he starts into a song, and about halfway through it, he realizes, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and he just kind of stopped. Yeah, he just sort of edits as he goes along. He's, 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 he's most people from New York will throw me out into the street, I believe. Yeah. Anybody can be <laughs> Anybody got a beer? <laughs> My mother did me deadly spite For she sent thieves in the dark of the night But my servants saw to flight They robbed my bow, they slew my knight They couldn't do to me no harm But they slew my baby in my arms And left me nor to wrap him in but the bloody sheet that he lay in. They left me not to dig his grave but the bloody sword that slew my babe all alone the grave I made and all alone the tears I shed and all alone the bell I rang and all alone the psalm I sang I leaned my head all against the block and there I cut my lovely locks. I cut my locks and I changed my name from Fair Elena to Sweet William. Went to court to serve our king as the famous flower of serving men. So well I served my lord the king that he made me his chamberlain. He loved me as his son, the famous flower of serving men. And oft times he'd look at me and smile, so swift his heart I did beguile, and he blessed the day that I became the famous flower of serving men. But all alone in my bed at e'en, it was there I dreamed a dreadful dream. I saw my bed swim with blood, and I saw the thieves all around my head. Our king has to the hunting gone, he's left no lords no gentlemen, he's left me there to guard his home, the famous flower of serving men. Our king he rode the wood all round, he searched all day but nothing found, and as he's rode himself alone, it's there he spied the milk white hind. Oh, the hind she broke, the hind she flew, Behind she trampled the brambles through, first she'd mount, then she'd sound, sometimes before, sometimes behind. Oh, what is this? How can this be? Such a hind as this I ne'er did see. Such a hind as this was never born. I fear she'll do me deadly harm. And long, long did his great horse turn to save his lord from branch and thorn. But long ere the day was o'er, it tangled all in his yellow hair. All in a glade the hind drew nigh, the sun shone bright all in his eye. He sprang down, sword drew, it vanished there all from his view. And all around the grass was green. And all around him a grave was seen, and he sat himself all on the stone. Great weariness it seized him on. Great silence hung from tree to sky. The woods grew still, the sun hung fire. As through the wood the dove he came, as through the wood he made his moan. Oh, the dove he sat down on a stone, so sweet he looked, so soft he sang. Alas, the day my love became the famous flower of serving men. The bloody tears they fell as rain, as still he sat and still he sang. Alas, the day my love became the famous flower of serving men. Our king cried out and he wept full sore. So loud unto the dove he did call, O oh, pretty bird, come sing it plain. Oh, it was a mother's deadly spite, for she sent thieves in the dark of the night. They come to rob, they come to slay, they made their sport, they went their way. 
And don't you think that her heart was sore as she laid the mole on your yellow hair? And don't you think her heart was woe as she turned her back away to go? And how she wept as she changed her name from Fair Elena to Sweet William, went to court to serve her king as the famous flower of serving men. The bloody tears they lay all round, he's mounted up and away he's gone, and one thought filled his mind, the thought of her that was a man. And as he's rode himself alone, a dreadful oath he there has sworn, that he would hunt her mother down, as he would hunt the wildwood swine. For there's four and twenty ladies all, they're all playing at the ball, but fairest of them all is the famous flower of serving men. He's rode himself into the ball, he's rode in there among them all, he's lifted her to his saddle brim, and there he's kissed her cheek and chin. The nobles stood and they stretched their eyes, the ladies took to their fans and smiled, such a strange homecoming no gentleman had ever seen. And he has sent his nobles all, to her mother they have gone, they take her that's done such wrong, they've laid her down in prison strong. And he's brought men up from the corn, and he sent men down to the thorn, all for to build a bonfire high, for for to set her mother by. And Bonnie sang the morning thrush, as there he sat in yonder bush, but louder did her mother cry, in the bonfire where she burned close by. For there she sat all among the thorn, and there she sang a dreadful song, alas the day that she became, the famous flower of serving men. For the fire took first all on her cheek, and then it took all on her chin. It spat and rang in her yellow hair, and soon there was no life left in. That's a Whoa. <laughs> wow. I'm sure you didn't leave out so <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. It's an app. It's an app, man. There's an app for that. It's all the brisk young butcher, as I have heard them say. He rode out from London town all on a certain day. Says he, a frolic, I will have my fortune for to try. I will go into Leicestershire some cattle for to buy. When he arrived at Leicester town, he chanced upon an inn. He called for an ostler and boldly he walked in. He called for liquor of the best in beer, a roving blade. And presently he set his eye upon the chambermaid. Then she brought out a candle to light him up to bed. And when she came into his room these words to her he said. One sovereign I will give to you, oh, to enjoy your charms. And all that night that maid did lay all in the butcher's arms. Twas early the next morning he prepared to go away. The landlord said, your reckoning, sir, you have forgot to pay. Oh no, the butcher did reply, pray do not think it strange. One sovereign I gave your maid, and I haven't got my change. <laughs> <laughs> they straightway bought the chambermaid and charged her with the same. The golden sovereign she gave up for fear she'd get the blame. The butcher he went on his way, well pleased with what had passed. But pretty soon the chambermaid grew thick about the ways. <laughs> Twas ere a twelve month after he came to town again. 
And just as he had done before, he stopped at the same inn. And when the buxom chambermaid she chanced him for to see, she brought a babe not three months old and laid him on his knee. <laughs> the butcher sat like one amazed and at the child did stare, but when the truth he did find out how he did stamp and swear. Oh no, the chambermaid did say, pray do not think it strange, one sovereign you gave to me, and here I've brought your chain. <laughs> <laughs> so come all your brisk and lively plates, I pray be ruled by me. Look well into your bargains before your money pay. Or else you'll find your ramblings may give you cause to rage. And if ever you sport with pretty maids, be sure to get your change. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mike's back. <laughs> <laughs>